it's criminal, it's inhumane. What he's done is, is, it's a travesty. I think it just boils straight down to greed. How can you protect your child from something that you can't see? You don't know it's there. You're, you're battling a ghost. Leslie and Jack Warden lived your typical American life, working hard, raising their son. Then one day, everything changed. When they realized they lived in a home permeated by a hidden poison, a poison that will affect them for the rest of their lives. It's appalling that someone in the United States can acquire so much wealth on the backs of communities and children. He's made his money poisoning children. For decades, some of the most highly toxic heavy metals, such as arsenic, cadmium, and especially lead, slowly rained down and settled as a fine dust on a community in Missouri called Herculaneum. When asked about the dust's possible danger, the town's mining smelter representatives assured local residents that there was nothing to worry about. But there was. And given the smelter owner's reputation, the deception should have been no surprise. It was bought in 1994 by American billionaire Ira Rennert, who was such a long track record of environmental abuses that the EPA labeled him America's worst private polluter. His usual tactics of misinformation and stalling worked for years until he was finally forced to buy out an entire neighborhood and bulldoze it into the ground because the contamination was so extreme. If I fed my son poison every day and any health agency knew that I was purposely feeding my child poison every day, they'd remove that child and lock me up. But yet they let Doe Run run their monster down there, putting poison into my child every day and did nothing. They never locked anybody up. They never stopped them. They're still doing it. In this day and age, in this country, if a man like Ira Rennert can get away with this behavior, imagine what he could get away with in a poor developing country like Peru. It's a city of 35,000 people, a big and bustling city. La Roya reminds a lot of people of the company towns, the coal mining towns and the Appalachians because of the uh, economic control that one company exercises over the entire city because it holds in its hands about 4,000 jobs and indirectly the entire population of La Roya. It's the major political actor, stronger than the city government, stronger than the national government. The Peruvian government is scared of losing the jobs and the investment that come from Do Run. Eager to improve its economy and weakened from a long history of political violence and corruption, the government is not doing enough to stop Ira Rennert from continuing his history of polluting for profit. My first impression of La Roya is the contamination. Uh, you smell it, you breathe it, you start coughing, your eyes water. It seems incredible that two million pounds of contamination can be coming out of those stacks every single day. The contamination billows out and they just fall like rain, contaminating every square inch of the city. They are being constantly, on a day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, being excessively exposed to lead. These poisons become trapped between narrow canyon walls, creating a huge gas chamber, literally. This man-made gas chamber is so efficient that over 99% of the city's 12,000 children have lead levels many times greater than U.S. standards. And everybody faces a risk of cancer 2,000 times higher than normal. Children are particularly at risk because their developing brain is easily damaged by lead exposure. Each year a child lives in La Roya, they have fewer IQ points to work with. Me duele el estómago, los huesos, y, y cuando, por ejemplo, estamos en examen y uno estudia, estudia, y, y ya después cuando estás en el examen te olvidas todo. Those adverse effects of lead which produce brain damage are permanent and irreversible. There's no recovery. You can't see the symptoms of lead. Many people call it the invisible killer because it affects internal organs, it affects behaviors in ways that you might not notice. 
and it's only when a child is severely contaminated and the impacts are irreversible that the parent begins to notice. When you think of a packet of sweetener, you just need almost a few grains of that as pure lead to immediately be lead poisoned. It takes, a, unfortunately, a tiny amount of dust. The whole environment is contaminated with lead. It's, it's on toys, it's on skin, it's on clothes. It's like being totally surrounded by smoke. It's impossible to escape from. E incluso hay estudios que los niños en el vientre de su madre ya tienen también plomo en la sangre. Es decir, que antes de nacer, los niños de Loroya están condenados por la irresponsabilidad social de la empresa. Remember the American neighborhood that had to be bulldozed into the ground because of high lead levels? Well, this Peruvian smelter emits 31 times more lead. But that hasn't stopped Ira Rennert from spending millions on misinformation and denial, claiming the children's lead and heavy metal poisoning wasn't from his smelter, but from bad hygiene lead-painted toys or car exhaust. People actually believed that if they just washed their hands, if they just wiped down their window seals each day, they were doing all that they needed to do to protect their children's health. And many found out that that was a, a blatant lie. The Centers for Disease Control did a comprehensive study of La Roya, and they showed that all the hand washing and street sweeping in the world wasn't going to clean up the city. Uh, what's needed is a drastic reduction of emission. And that was exactly the deal Ira Rennert made when he bought the smelter from the Peruvian government in 1997 for a bargain basement price, on the condition he invest his profits to dramatically reduce the pollution. 32 other foreign mining corporations made similar agreements with the government, but only Ira Rennert's smelter asked for delays to comply, claiming a lack of profits. The best business school in Peru did a major study. They showed that had Doran not sent back to their owner $96 million, they could have completed the requirements of their environmental compliance. So instead of cleaning up the smelter with his profits as promised, Ira Rennert secretly siphoned off almost $100 million. And what did he do with his money instead? It helped him build perhaps the most expensive house in the world with 29 bedrooms and 39 bathrooms. At a cost of $186 million, this mansion created a controversy even in an exclusive New York community because of its obscene size and decadence, complete with gold leaf inlays and bowling alley. It just goes beyond my comprehension that somebody would need so much wealth and negatively impact so many lives in order to have that type of wealth. I can't understand how the man sleeps at night. This imperiled city's pollution is so severe, it is now listed as one of the top 10 world's worst polluted places, alongside such infamous sites as Chernobyl. All these sites are shut down except La Arroyo which continues polluting 24-7 and is the only site caused by a large multinational company. Yo he perdido dos hijos que ese no es tan fácil perder. En acá está mi hijita, donde ella me hizo sufrir nueve años. Han muerto jóvenes, niños, bebitos, ancianos. Yo no quiero esa madre que sufra como yo. To do what Mr. Rennert is doing here, though, is more than criminal, it's immoral. To be making children sick and die because you want to make a profit is, to me, among the most immoral activities that I've ever heard of. Yo quisiera ser de grande un abogado, abogado y médico. De mí, mi sueño sería ver todo que esté verde, no haga contaminación. Given his long-term exposure to lead, Moises will face tremendous challenges to become a lawyer or a doctor. But if humankind chooses to stop men like Ira Rennert, chooses to stop their contamination and acid rain, it is possible that the bleached hills that surround La Arroya could one day be green again, and its people could begin to heal. <laughs>